Hello and welcome everyone in today's nursing webinar academic session. Myself Shanti Bhattacharya, the Vice President, Nursing Yashoda Hospitals. And today we are going to discuss about the interoperative nursing care of ortho patients. Having said so, let me introduce our expert panelist, who is none other, Dr. Pavin Rao Garu, who is our senior consultant and orthopedic surgeon. And uh, no uh, words can be expressed because right from the draft of the nursing webinar, I think I've met a couple of times and we have shared our views and exchanged our thoughts in making the PPT. He's uh, no words, as I said, he's a very eminent, highly competitive, and uh, the great uh, passionate mentor, what I could see in this few uh, entire week. I welcome you, sir. And uh, I think this is my uh, great uh, honor and privilege that I'm uh, you know, sharing this platform along with you, such a great mentor. And uh, also let me welcome Jisha George, who is our AGM nursing from Second Abad Yeshoda Hospital, who is very senior, highly efficient and very dynamic uh, leader. And uh, today we are going to talk about the interoperative nursing care. As you know, the uh, strategies of interoperative nursing care along with the interdisciplinary approach is, uh, uh, you know, one should always uh, practice upon. Over to you, Jisha, for the rest of the session. Good afternoon, ma'am, and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for you for giving this opportunity. Let's begin our session by understanding what is improperative care of ortho patients. Coming to intraoperative patient, intraoperative care is patient care during a surgery. To the time and intervention done during a surgery by the surgeon, anesthetist, nurse, technician, and other OT team members are included in the OT surgical team. Coming to intraoperative intervention, as we discussed, discussed in the previous slide, here we can see Dr. Praveen and his team members are performing a surgery on a patient. So here, uh, the, we would like to ask Sir's opinion on, uh, as we see OT is just like an aer airplane cockpit and all working professionals are like crew members. So the question to you, sir, is do you face any challenging situations when you communicate with the team members, especially in the emergency scenario, sir? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, be associated with these uh, kind of teaching webinars. Thank you so much, Jisha and uh, Shanti. I'm very indebted. So uh, one thing before I go on, I'm not able to see your slides. Are you able to see Jisha's slides? I'm not yeah, able yeah. to see you. I no, can see. You can share the slides, no? Where the sir can always uh, see. Where is the slides? I'm not able to see the slides. So I don't think the, the other participants yes, can sir. see. Just, just yeah, now, now you're sharing. Yeah, okay. Now it has turned out. Go to the... Uh, so you need, go to the... Go to your second or third slide or whatever. Third one. Third one, Disha. Yeah. No, no, no. You're, 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 you have to share your slide again. Yes. Yes, exactly okay. here. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, you know, communication is is a challenge if you do not talk to each other before the surgery. So that is the whole whole the whole idea of uh, working together in a team is that you know each other. Even if you don't know each other before the surgery, you introduce yourselves. You familiarize yourself with the procedure which is going to, uh, you know, which is you're going to perform. And each one of them has their own individual sort of roles to play. So if we do the, you know, uh, sign in and time out properly, which I'm sure you're going to talk about it, there is no problem of about, you know, communication. And like you said, it is like an aircraft, you know, it is not just the pilot who is important. It is a co-pilot. It is a tower, you know, it is a communications. It is a, the whole of the crew members who are responsible for the safety of the passenger for that matter, the patient. So every member is important. And yes, if you do not talk to each other before the surgery, sometimes communication does become a little difficult. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I mean... If if you if you say literally, I mean, 
when you are doing a robotic and you are wearing that coat and all that, yeah, sometimes whatever you are talking, the other guy cannot listen. So you know that's on a little lighter vein. Otherwise, yeah, it is uh, to re-emphasize. You need to talk to your team members before the surgery. Map out what you are going to do. Map out all the steps you are going to do, and that is going to go a long way in you know establishing a good uh, contact and a, and a, and or keep the communication channels open. So, sir, is it uh, the the uh, comments uh, you have provided just now? Is it implemented uh, such effectively in your OT premises zone? And yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, most of us before the surgery, what we do is that we just stand. Uh, I mean, when the patient is getting anesthetized, we all you know get together and uh, we decide what we are going to do. Like for example, we are doing a knee, so you know. We would we would very quickly go through the steps. Okay, I need a stem. I need a bird. I need a saw. You know things of this sort. And and the scrub nurse who is there is immediately you know yes I have I have I have you know things of that sort is it, it goes on. So yeah, I mean most of the times I wish I we could do this pre-operative you know meeting a little more uh, in detail. But because of our work pressure and because of so many cases, we are not able to do it as much as we do. But yes, we do it every time and on, on, uh, for every single case, we do it. Yeah, over to you, Jisha. Coming to goals of intraoperative care. First, first and main goal is to maintain patient safety, privacy and comfort and to maintain safe surgery and hemostasis. Maintain aseptic technique throughout the procedure and to save medication administration, especially LASA, sedatives, and paralytic agents. LASA medicines are nothing but look-alike and sound-alike medication to prevent patient from any of the harm and to save administration of anesthesia. So as we all know, intraoperative skills are extremely important for all the team members, especially for the nurses. And uh, sir, do you wish to provide your insight on their competency level or overall area of improvement or I think any sort of any lacking factors which need to be spoken about. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, the patient is at the center of all things. And um, I think the, as surgeons, we do get updated. We go learn new techniques. We go learn you know, newer procedures and we uh, keep ourselves abreast. It is equally important for the nursing staff, uh, the scrub nurse, the, the circulating nurse, everybody, even the technician for that matter, to attend certain courses, to attend certain conferences and keep themselves updated. Because what, what is happening is that technology is growing at such a fast pace, you know. For example, now we are doing a robotic. You know, unless the scrub nurse is trained in that, he will not be able to, you know, uh, uh, help the surgeon for that matter, you know, in, in getting a better outcome. So yes, it is very, very important. And uh, most of, uh, I would strongly recommend that all the nursing staff, they regularly go for such certain conferences, uh, you know, attend a certain courses so that they are updated. In fact, if I, if I might take one more minute, we have a very good course, which is done by AO International, it's called as an ORP course, Operative Home Personal Course. And uh, in fact, uh, from our hospital, we have we can send at least one or two, uh, you know, nurses for these courses every year, free of cost, all over the country wherever they want. So I would actively encourage all these guys to, you know, come up and give their names so that we can do something to send them up for these courses. Disha. coming to thumb of role, according to WHO surgical check safety checklist, it includes three important roles, that is sign-in, time-out, and sign-out. Sign-in is nothing but before induction of anesthesia, and this time-out is before the skin insertion. And coming to sign-out, sign-out is before the patient leaves the operation theater. Um, so when uh, we talk about this uh, clinical pathways uh, for, for the patient safety, I think uh, is the adherence to this uh, pathway is sole enough for the patient safety and the you know healthcare professional safety as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean these are the basic tenets of patient safety. You know, if you cannot do a sign in, time out, or a sign out, there is no point. I mean, 
in operating on a patient because if you don't do any one of them, you are compromising on the safety of the patient. So it has yes. to be done. And this is recommended by the WHO. These are WHO guidelines. If you can follow these three things, I'm sure our patients are going to be very safe. Over to you, Nisha. Then coming to sign-in. Sign-in is nothing but before the induction of anesthesia. The sign-in checklist should be cross-checked by nurse, anesthetist, and doctor. The nurse has to make sure that the identification of the patient. Wrong patient errors are uncommon, but can be serious if not checked properly. For example, shifting the patient with the similar names, that is P. Priyanka and T. Priyanka, posted for different surgeries. At the same, same time, right, right procedure also should be confirmed by cross-checking the order in the case sheet and the consent form. For example, patient is posted for right knee replacement. It should be clearly documented as right knee re replacement instead of just a knee replacement. Then coming to the consent. What do you mean by consent? Consent is nothing but two or more persons are giving the same thing in the same manner. There are two different types of consents are available. One is simple consent and another one is informed consent. Simple consent is nothing but simply ask for a per permission to perform a procedure like IV cannulation. The same thing coming to informed consent. Informed consent is a written informed consent. The patient should be aware about the risk, benefits, treatment alternatives, choices of decision making, and provide his or her approval to the surgeon. The most important part, consent always should be legible. If the consent is taken by from the patient, the patient is able to understand what is going to happen to him. At the same time, he is able to understand which part of the body is affected, and what are the effects and side effects of the procedure and who, are, how, who all are involved in the surgery team. At the same time, they should ensure that the written consent should be taken prior to the surgery. I think when we talk about the consent and, uh, and we have seen the very important, there are two types like simple and informed. And we have seen even uh, as uh, the input provided by sir that uh, what happens uh, during when we take the consent and what processes are being uh, you know, implemented, what the communications we provide to the attendees and the patient. So is this, this whole component is a right kind of description, sir, and one must adhere the same practices, I think, in terms of patient safety. What is your insight about that, sir? Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so far as consent is concerned, it is very, very important. And I don't think there is any uh, room for taking any simple consents nowadays. So you, it has to be uh, uh, an informed consent. It should be written. And uh, when we are talking to the patient, always make sure that there is a family member or some other representative with him who can also understand and help the patient understand if he's not able to do so. Not only should you tell him what you're trying to do, but you should also tell the patient the different kind of, uh, you know, alternatives which are uh, available. For example, you just can't take a concern that I'm doing a total knee replacement for. You have to tell him that apart from total knee replacement, you could also do a partial knee replacement. You could also do a, let's say, a high tibial osteotomy. What are the, you know, uh, good things about each of these procedures and why a total knee replacement is better for you? So the patient has to be given all the options. You know, he has to be told all pros and cons of the same. I think in today's day and world, informed consent is the one which you have to take and Unless it's a very uh, emergency and the patient cannot talk, maybe that there is a role for a simple sort of consent in those cases. But yes, it is it, it is important to have this uh, uh, informed consent every time, always. So I think it is very important. I think the nurses across uh, should really know the total parameters and the components involved in the taking the consent and help surgeon and clinical teams to obtain the same. Over to you, Richard. Then coming after consent, we have to make sure that the surgical site marking, it should be done by the doctor and should be cross-checked by the nursing team. The marking should be done with the permanent skin marker should provide good viability. At the same time, anesthesia machines and all emergency medicines should be keep it ready before the surgery. And same time, if any patient is allergic to any of the drugs should be documented to prevent anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylactic reactions occur in roughly 1 in 10,000 to 20,000 persons. If any patient is having difficulty of airway or any chance of aspiration should be documented at the time of PSE. 
During surgery, advanced airway like LMA should be keep it as ready. If patient is required for if patient is suspected for any blood loss, the nurse should prepare the blood pro blood products before the surgery starts. Here we can see the international patient safety goal number one, that is identification of the patient. Here the nurse is identifying the patient with the patient name with initial and ID number. We have to make sure that before doing any procedure, we have to do the proper identification of the patient. At the same time, this slide shows international patient safety goal number four, that is the correct surgical site marking. This patient is posted for left TKR, that is total knee replacement. And the surgical site is marked with clearly and mentioned as the side also, that is left. So here, I think the, uh, the image talks about a minor error or which is a major error, like, you know, I can, I think sir will definitely, you know, he must have already found out what is the error, which is when, when I can see the patient is with the toe rings yeah. and it is when not removed and site marking, site marking is already done. And um, so, uh, yes, of course, we are going to talk about the nurse's responsibility in marking the site and uh, site marking, sir, your opinion on the same. Yeah, I mean. I mean, we took this picture today morning. This is one of our cases which we did in the morning and this picture was taken on purpose and mm -hmm. the, the rings were left on purpose to say that it is not enough that you just mark the surgery and the site. It is also important that you take out all the metallic objects which are there in the body. So this is something which is missed very often. The rings are very big, you can see it, but sometimes you will see, you know, you'll have these small nose rings, you know, the ear rings and all that. So these are also very important. You have to take them out. You have to see this before the patient comes into the pre-op room. And uh, maybe sometimes uh, you have to tell them that you have to get all these things removed with the help of their goldsmith or whoever it is, you know, because sometimes they're, they're left in for such a long time and they don't come out. So th this is very important. And uh, this slide was put on purpose so that, you know, the tone rings are actually highlighted. So uh, my request and our, uh, you know, little corrections to all the nurses across, if you, you know, have this, you confront this kind of situation, as uh, I agree with Sir Goldsmith, or we have internal maintenance department, you can call them prior, they can just come, cut it, remove uh, the stickering or uh, paste, uh, putting the, applying the paste, I mean, plaster enough is not going to solve the purpose. Involve the maintenance department, they will do a wonderful job. Over to you, Disha. Next, move on, to, move on to the slide that is concerns. These are the concerns which, which we are using in our hospital that is high risk concern and coming to anesthesia concern. Okay, go to the next. Okay. So, uh, as, as just a minute, uh, as uh, we were just looking at the high risk surgery consent, are the all orthopedic surgeries bound to be high risk in nature? We are going to take it as a myth or fact. I mean, to be, I mean, if you have to be a little philosophical, there is no surgery which is um, low risk, there's no surgery which is high risk. All surgeries have deserved to be treated with equal respect. Any time thing, any time anything can go south. Things can happen. Crop up, you know, allergies, you know, cautery birds, blood pressure is falling. You, it might be a very simple surgery, but let's say there is a big arterial bleed. You lose a lot of blood, and so I mean, all surgeries are important. But having said that, in orthopedics, we do come across certain particular age group. Most of the time we deal with these old people, you know, uh, who are more than 70, 80 years old. They have associated diabetes, they are diabetics, they, are, they have hypertension, they have kidney issues. Some of them have stents in them. Some of them had a lot of cardiac surgery. So yes, these are, and then you're trying to do a major surgery on them, like a knee or a hip, or for that matter, you know, fixing a hip fracture. So these patients tend to be, tend to have a little more uh, complex sort of scenarios in the theater when compared to the other uh, patients, yes. So that is the reason why giving an informed consent is so important in these patients. Yeah. Coming to time out, time out should be done before the skin incision, where all the team members have introduced themselves by name and role. At that same time, they have to confirm the patient by name, procedure, and where the incision would be named. And, and 
antibiotic prophylaxis should be given within last 60 minutes. It should be ensured that all prophylactic medicines antibiotics should be given. Come so, to time. Just a minute. The, so before time out, uh, I think uh, maybe you or your team member, do we have a process of uh, checking the sterility indicator in terms of uh, before we open up? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this question for me? Yes, sir. To oh, okay. Sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every time, every yes. single time, the moment the trays are opened up, the stickers are removed. They are not thrown away. They are stuck on the board. And, yes. uh, you know, it is it is confirmed by the uh, scrub nurse. It is confirmed by the uh, your, your circulating nurse. And then it is confirmed by the surgeon or the assistant surgeon. And uh, it is checked that all the parameters on the sticker are, are, are there. So, yeah, that's very important. This confusion can happen because notice most of the things are packed in trays. Yes. And then you it's very difficult to distinguish between a tray which is autoclaved or not autoclaved. So unless you see a sticker and, and confirm that it is sterile, I mean, uh, uh, otherwise you would end up probably if, if somebody has left a unsterilized tray there, you would probably open it up. So it is done every time. And it's a very important step in the theater for us. Here we can see, see the timeout checklist. It should be written by the consultant as well as the nursing team. Then sign out. Sign out is the before the patient leaves the operating room, sign out should be done. Before doing the sign out procedure, nurses has to verbally identify the name of the procedure, completion of instruments and sponge and the needle counts. Specimens should be labeled properly and make sure that it's sent to lab. Any equipment problems faced during surgery, it should be addressed. At the same time, they should ask the surgeon and anesthetist for any key concerns for recovery and management of this patient. Coming to never, never even scenario that includes mop and instrument count in OT. It is very, very important to maintain a strict mop count and instrument check before closure of surgical site or cavity. Each package should contain fixed number of punch gauzes. It helps to count the mops before and after the surgery. Here we use mop with blue radium effect markers of the count of five and goes by count of 10 only. It is easier to identify, suppose in case of count is not matching postoperatively and with pre-op, it can be identified with the help of CM machine. Here we can see the examples of radio opaque sponges and bunch of instruments. These are the ra blue radium opaque mops and the ghost pieces. And here clearly they arrange the instruments after counting. Coming to sign out checklist. This sign out checklist should be written by the nurses, nursing team only. At the end of the sign out checklist, nurse has to write their name and signature. These are the anesthesia record which we are using in our hospital and surgical safety checklist. And coming to the next slide, here we can see a brief information board which we are using in operation theater. If you are seeing in the board, here we can see all the information about the patient, including patient name, name of the surgery, surgeon's name, time in, time out, sign in, and number of gauzes, how many are we used. So only thing we have to ensure that the board should be written accurately to prevent the surgical errors. Coming to the in-charge's responsibility. in should be strictly adherence to the surgical safety checklist by training the staff and other personnel and pre-assess the knowledge and develop some audit plans and random auditing and findings should be discussed with their team members and delegate the task with the senior, delegate the task to the other nurses as their competency. At the same time, next slide is OT nurses responsibility. What are the OT nurses responsibility? To maintain aseptic techniques throughout the surgery and to prevent injuries like patient fall, needle stick injury, pottery burns, et cetera prevent hypothermia and to prevent quartery burns by applying the paddles properly, report the sudden instrument breakdown or and arise a new one and adhere to the safe medication practices. At the same so here, time... So here, no, I know the orthopedic surgeries are uh, very long in nature and uh, in such a you know, how do we, uh, you know, we nurses try to prevent the quartery burns? So, mm, yeah, I mean, uh, Quartery burns are very rare nowadays. And the reason is that we are very careful. That is one, of course. And uh, the quartery pads are better. We have got um, 
what what should i say the equipment has actually it, it is much better if you want the common reason why you get burns is when you actually paint the patient and there's a lot of fluid like betadine you know some saffron earlier days they used to saffron and spit all this used to trickle down and it used to wet the you know patient pad so that has to be prevented if you wet the patient pad your you know neutral grounding is lost and the patient will have burns so always make sure that the cautery pad uh, wherever it is put the patient pad it has to be dry and it should not be wet so this is uh, important okay coming to the nurses responsibility again we have to read back and read loud to confirm the medication orders to prevent the medication errors document dispatch the histopathological samples do and ask surgeons in case of any doubt don't hesitate to ask any doubts during the procedure and the same, first and important thing is do not miss or forget to dispatch the samples to the lab proper handover of patients with the clinical conditions and all with all reports imaging to the recovery nurses to continue the nursing care coming to the conclusion let us conclude the topic today's topic intraoperative care it's a collaborative and interdisciplinary approach which requires teamwork and coordination the essence of surgical care lies in providing expert prices and compassionate treatment while the prioritizing patient safety and well-being thank you um, so sir i think having uh, done with the session i know this is a very uh, big topic it cannot just be over within uh, half an hour session but uh, here we would like to you know as a token of encouragement to all your ot nurses throughout and the uh, the nurses across student nurses watching this uh, webinar session would you share any kind of tips or some encouraging message uh, for the nurses out there no, no i mean <clears throat> i'm sure what encouraging message but i would like to acknowledge that you know the the nurses the scrub nurses circulating the all the the ot techs the anesthesia techs it is because of them that surgeries are being done it is not because of the surgeon surgeon is just one cog in the wheel i mean if you do not have good support from the nursing staff from the other technicians you cannot complete any nursing and i have to be with and i have to tell you that we have one of the top best nursing staff the ot technician staff with us and uh, see in ortho we we do quite a quite a lot of cases we do hundreds of cases in a month and in a day sometimes we are doing you know 30 35 cases everything works out seamlessly and why is it working seamlessly without any major or minor hiccups for that matter it is because we have good staff trained staff who follow the who protocol they do their regular sign in you know time out sign out that is the reason why we are getting a, a we are we are giving a patient a better result a yes. safe patient is going out of the hospital so and um, just because we are doing a good job it doesn't mean that we become complacent i would strongly recommend especially our orthopedic nurses that uh, you have to learn learning is every day process newer things are coming in newer techniques come so you have to always be updated you have to go out attend conferences you know attend courses and make yourselves uh, uh, abreast with the latest what is uh, having and um, yeah i think we are very lucky as surgeons that we are working in a environment where we have such great uh, you know support staff and without them i don't think we could have delivered what we are actually delivering it is a team game and everybody is equal on the table there is nobody more nobody is less so thank you so much for uh, very appreciative words for the ot nurses and all nurses thank you so much i think i have the enjoyed the most uh, uh, while uh, we were drafting the webinar nursing webinar topics and all and uh, seeking forward to have many more sessions with you sir thank you disha and thank you sir so much for your thank you, thank you. Thank very you. valuable time and uh, there is a small announcement that we are uh, next uh, uh, scenario in the next orthopedic uh, session we are going to uh, you know provide the uh, clinical scenario as well for the fresher nurse uh, nurses to understand the uh, concept better thank you stay connected again for thursday thank you everyone we are thank you so much always a pleasure to be associated thank you bye bye shanti bye bye, bye. bye. bye.